We welcome you all to the south end zone of Kyle Field. The calendar has turned to May, early May, and we have another Aggie Town Hall with our Director of Athletics, Ross Bjork. I'm Will Johnson with Andrew Monaco. Obviously, the stream is going over there. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. I turned it down. You've got promise. it going. You've got it going. <laughs> all good. Uh, Ross Bjork, our Director of Athletics, uh, k kindly joins us again. Uh, we did one of these in the latter half of April, but a lot going on. Uh, people are, uh, know that the announcement of the Centennial Campaign has come. Uh, you've got meetings you're attending, things like that. So we moved this one up to, to earlier May. Uh, plan on just a little programming here. We plan on one more, June. Yep. July is when we take the breaks. Everybody yep. hits the reset button, uh, vacations, yep. things like that. We will take July off with the town hall. We will return to you in August. Just in time yeah. for football in the fall sports calendar. Yeah, because if we call Ross sometime in July, the phone's going to be off. You only get so much of a window, and you're so. taking – I hope so. I don't blame you. <laughs> kind of that, that first uh, first week in July and then kind of leading up to SEC media day. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's we, the official okay, kickoff. That's the official of kickoff. That's there. definitely, kinda, that's that's kinda definitely the, the lull in our business. That's but we have to do a podcast time. together, right? We've done it. It's we, the yeah. tradition. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. By the anniversary, so we'll have that yeah, as well to look forward to in the summer. Yeah, Perfect. So right. we go now with our May Town Hall with our Director of Athletics, Ross Bjork. And as always, you can submit your questions through the official website of Texas A&M Athletics. Go to 12thman.com slash askross if you have a question for a future town hall. But the 12th man has responded again. Plenty of questions today. And I think we have to start with Justin Bohannon, class of 18, because he's <laughs> a fellow Kansas. He's a fellow Kansas. Yeah. yeah. Goddard, Goddard, Kansas. Goddard, that's right outside of Wichita. Okay. Yep. You're so Dodge I, City? Dodge City. Yeah. Okay. In order to get to Wichita from Dodge City, you drove right through Goddard. Okay. It's kind oh. of a suburb. It's back when I was growing up, dr driving to Wichita, it was like a three-hour drive. It was kind of more two-lane, and Goddard was a kind of a stop about 20 minutes before you got to Wichita. Now, I think it's all blended together. Is it really? So, yeah, it's, just, it's grown. So, I wonder if Justin is originally – from Kansas, oh. or does he just live there now? Go oh. Yeah, gotcha. Class of eighteen, a graduate. So, so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right, he's a grad. Mm -hmm. But that's how, that's how you student, get. So I wonder. That's how you get to the top of the list, though. Yeah, that, by starting it like that. That's right. Right. That's right. Got to take care of. Go the, with the flattery, Kansas. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> but what? He, but he does say so. He may maybe he's originally from Kansas because he says we are usually very grounded people, <laughs> full of common sense. Yeah. Which is certainly true with you. Yeah. I would agree with that. You gotta like that. Man. <laughs> I would agree with That's that. That's good stuff coming from the home state. I like to have common yeah. sense. I hope I hope everyone thinks that, but yeah. maybe not. And what Justin <laughs> did is he submitted the first question actually for this May town hall. Then a couple of days ago, he, he saw something in the news, and he resubmitted <laughs> a second one. So yeah. Yeah. it's actually two questions coming from Justin in Goddard, Kansas, class of 18. So here's the first one, Ross, after uh, he compliments you about your common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, what can we do to make sure my generation of former students feels like our support is important? We are the yeah. future big donors, yet don't really get any attention, says Justin. Yeah. yeah. No, I think uh, I think he's on to something and, and something that we, we talk about all the time. In our, in our 12th Man Foundation, we, we've said it numerous times that we have the, the best fundraising organization in, in college sports. And, and that's not just us saying it. Our peers say it. I don't know how many calls come in every week from other organizations in college fundraising to say, hey, how's the 12th Man Foundation doing it? Or we get a technology company that we're a partner with saying such and such schools looking at this, they want to know how A&M does it through the 12th Man Foundation. So great organization. We have a, we have a young alumni program that if you're within the last 12 years of uh, graduating from Texas A&M, you get some benefits related. You get some extra sort of boost. If you give $50, you get credit for, for more than that. So there, there's a program that's, that's in place right now. We also, in the pipeline of building out the student body, the current 12th man, is we have a student membership. And we have, a, we have several thousand members that are giving $25 a, a year as a student. So that is building a, a pipeline, and they get priority points. And, you know, I think the, the biggest challenge is I think a lot of people look at this as, as a transaction. And so what we want to do is flip it into just support and philanthropic. And what I mean by the transaction is I want to sit on the 50-yard line. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes a contribution to the 12th Man Foundation. 
but those seats are sold and those seats aren't really turning over at a rapid rate to maybe fit you know Justin and, and what he wants to do so typically people are going to look at buying a season ticket and the the ones that are available are typically going to be in the in the upper end zones um, and so do people see the the value of that so student membership is a big push for us young alumni program uh, can continue to evolve and, and we can promote that more and more and then creative things like the gigam pass where last year we introduced this and you could basically buy eight tickets and you could use those eight tickets however you you know saw fit you want to use two of them for alabama and two of them for the auburn game then you had four left so trying to be creative and flexible i think is a way to to build the younger generation mm -hmm. the younger former students and then you know through events you know we do we do coaches night in partnership with the association typically that that can be a younger crowd at mm -hmm. those events mm -hmm. um, and so doing things like that i think uh, you know is a push for us and but we i guarantee you justin that our staff in the 12th man foundation they think about this every day of how to build you know that that future generation so it does it does not go unnoticed for yeah. sure what i thought was interesting during the <clears throat> centennial campaign and champions council yeah. weekend was the people who came up and spoke yeah. combination yeah. of yeah. our president right yeah uh, dr banks was right. there one but there was the lead gift donors obviously important right. but the waggis packs were also yeah. part of it and yeah. their donation was to general and it right. was almost trusting the 12th man right. foundation we know what you right. will do we trust that you will do that and i thought it was a nice mix and yeah. and, and talking with the 12th man foundation saying this is a great introduction yeah. and then and then be a part of it i yeah. think there is that outreach there, there is and and the waggis packs are sort of newer younger donors right and so again <clears throat> a lot of a lot of what i'm hearing when i talk to our 12th man foundation staff or talk to donors who have been around a long time and they're seeing some of these names of people they're like i don't know who that is mm -hmm. And they're like, that's okay. That's a good thing. That means there's there's new donors that are that are stepping up. And so, Texas A&M is a huge place, mm -hmm. one of the biggest uh, alumni, former student bodies in the whole country. And so, trying to make it individualized and continuing that piece of it, that's what we have to focus on. So that that's how people get engaged. All right, and that was from Justin Bohannon, class of 18 from Goddard, Kansas. And then, like I said, just a few days ago, he came in with another one with a second yeah, question no, after man. he saw what happened at Baton Rouge. I like this question this yeah. past weekend. Yeah. So it's not a question, Ross. It's actually a, it's just five words he sent to yeah. you. Yeah. Bring Garth yeah. to Kyle Field. <laughs> yeah. And I, obviously, yeah. referencing yeah. what happened in Baton Rouge at Tiger Stadium just last yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, Garth has been, uh, he's had several. He was at Notre Dame. He's been at Florida. He's been at LSU, obviously. I think Arkansas may have been in the last uh, couple weeks as well. So we're on the list, and we're trying to make it happen. We're doing everything we can. Last summer, we were we were like an inch away from another, not Garth, but another big-name mm. act that would have been great in Kyle Field. And coming out of COVID, that person's team and all their folks were like, Boy, we, we want a sold out venue, and we're like, look, we can make it eighty thousand, we can make it twenty thousand, we can make it as big. Right. We'll sell it out at whatever number you want to sell mm -hmm. it out at. And I think they were just a little skittish about coming out of, uh, out of COVID. So we have a whole group that we've revised our outside special events, and they are focused on how do we bring more music to uh, to College Station and, and Kyle Field. And so we're pushing, we're trying. Uh, we haven't landed it yet, uh, but that it's something that is a priority for us. And I think uh, I think our good friend Billy Lucci even tweeted something, right? And Parker McCollum, yeah. who's an Aggie, he jumped said, on it. <laughs> hey, I'd love to do a show with Kyle Field. Um, so, look, it's a conversation that's out there. And, look, it's up to us to deliver. But also you have to have the act that, that's willing. And so we're, we're pushing, we're trying. We're trying to leverage everything that we have. Um, and we need to we need to land something at some point. It'd be fun because it, it'd be a lot of fun. A lot of fun, and it would be packed. I mean, I, yes, I agree. I look, agree. I, I think Parker. I think he'd be great. You know, other big name acts. Obviously, Garth. Um, there's another famous Texan that I think plays for uh, for big uh, venues, <laughs> right? I mean, so there are lots of people in the music world that uh, I think would be great at Kyle Field, and and we're trying. We're trying. 
All right. Good stuff. And thank you, Justin, class of 18, for those couple of questions. Uh, we'll move on to the class of 22, Nolan mm -hmm. Moore. He's from Orange, Texas, southeast Texas. And it, it's more questions along the lines of an NCAA selection committee <laughs> yeah. here yeah. because uh, – yeah. I think if you haven't noticed, you need to. The Texas A&M women's tennis team has just been unreal this year. Uh, they're 30-1. and one. Uh, they, yep. they made it a clean sweep through the SEC. They won the regular season undefeated, then yep. went and won the tournament, right. uh, swept right through that right. in Gainesville, the SEC tournament. Now they're yep. hosting the NCAAs here at the Mitchell Center starting tomorrow at 1 o'clock. But Nolan asks, yep. have you asked, Ross, the NCAA, why our women's <laughs> tennis team was seeded seventh? In the NCAA yeah. tournament. Yeah. <laughs> there was another uh, outreach, um, a friendly outreach on Twitter to me, and basically said, why do you keep letting this happen? <laughs> <laughs> or, no, how much longer will you let this go on? And it was related to, obviously, they're talking about men's basketball. They were talking about college football playoff, you know, from 2020. Um, and so that's uh, obviously, uh, hey, the buck stops here, right? I'm, I'm the AD, so I, I get it. You know, the tennis thing is interesting. Uh, Coach Weaver and I, we've kind of talked about this the second half of the season. There was one point where, again, we've only lost one match, but there was one point where we won like three matches, three SEC matches, and we like went from like number eight down to like number 12 in the middle of the season. Like shouldn't you go the other number way. eight to like number six or five or whatever? And the way the rankings work, so there's a, there's a human poll, which we're ranked number one in the human poll, USTA. Mm-hmm. And there's coaches, there's media members on there, there's people affiliated. Tim Cass, who used to be here at A&M, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's part of the USTA. So there's the human poll, but the seeding in the NCAA tournament, this is what I've learned, is based on ITA rankings. And then ITA rankings are based on who do you play, mm -hmm. who did they play, who did their opponents play, who beat who, and it's like this whole formula. Kind of like an RPI. It's like an RPI yeah. type type formula and so i was looking at the men's side tcu is the number one seed in the ncaa tournament on the men's side but they're number five in usta oh mm -hmm. so it's opposite of what mm -hmm. it looks like for us but w why are they number one and one mm -hmm. seeding and they're number five just like why are we one in the human poll so it sounds like the ncaa selection committee and I looked at some of their minutes a couple of weeks ago. It's fascinating that he asked this question because I wanted to know, like, what are they using? Right. And I looked at their minutes from one of their meetings, and they pretty much talked about the ITA rankings. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's uh, it's unfortunate, but look, let's just go win. I mean, yeah, let's just go win. Like, if <laughs> le if if we can use that as fuel, and our ladies have been playing at a high level, let's just go win it. I mean, and then we'll just say we are number one. So. I get what he's saying, and it, it can be frustrating, but now we just have to take care of business. I liked at the uh, athletic staff meeting yesterday, yeah. all the coaches, yeah. and Coach Weaver said, yeah, we had a pretty good spring. Right, right. <laughs> you said, yeah, we, yeah, had pretty, uh, we ran, we, yeah. we, we ran yeah. right through the SEC. Unde yeah. Undefeated, <laughs> undefeated. <laughs> in regular season <laughs> tournament. So, But for him, it was yeah. all about his student athletes, right? right? right. That, was, that was it, and put the yep. attention yep. on them. Yep. Great time of year, yeah, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great time of year. Championship time. Men's and women's golf made the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Women's yeah. golf hadn't made it in several years, so that's uh, that's exciting for them. The men's team is playing up in Waco on uh, on Friday afternoon against yeah. Tulsa. Track and field, obviously, is doing well. Baseball's in a, in a great you know position. Mm -hmm. uh, hate it for our young ladies in, in softball uh, with what's going on, but maybe we can have a strong finish with our last home series. So spring sports are, are, mm -hmm. are doing really, really well across the board. Mm-hmm. And again, that equestrian finished second, right? Yeah, at the national meet, mm -hmm. very close missed it to by, winning it you know, all, just yeah. a couple points. Mm -hmm. So, and that mm -hmm. women's tennis team, they will start Friday, one o'clock. It's A and M Corpus Christi, the first opponent yep. of the Mitchell Center, round mm -hmm. one of the NCAA tournament. It's going to be hot, but I think we'll have I think we'll have a great crowd. I yeah. think it's uh, yeah, it'll be fun Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. All right, Ross, uh, uh, we had a couple of questions regarding uh, something that was just announced here at Texas A&M, obviously very important. Uh, and uh, you mentioned earlier, Andrew, at the Champions Council weekend for the mm -hmm. 12th Man Foundation, uh, it essentially was the launch of the Centennial yeah. Campaign. Right. Uh, and uh, if you haven't looked at uh, what is coming online, basically right out in front of us, the south end zone area of Kyle Field, Bright Complex, new indoor practice facility for football, 
academic and wellness center. There'll be a new indoor track and field uh, for that right. program over right. on the West Campus as a part of this right. centennial campaign. And we were talking to uh, Brady Bullard, a, a senior VP for the 12th Man Foundation, yesterday about this. And, and yes, the launch was last yeah. week. Yeah. The announcement was last week. But he mentioned, I mean, there was so much going <laughs> into this prior to launch. Yeah, uh, People may have just heard about this last week, but this has been wow. – Head down, go to work for yeah. quite some time on the Centennial campaign. Tons of work. I mean, just really just in the last, um, I'd say, 12 months to really get towards the launch of the campaign. But you go back even farther. Back when I got here in 2019, there was already architects on board. Mm. There was conversations going on about different pieces and parts of what could take place. It was, you know, sort of high-level thinking at the time. Uh, different ideas than what we have now, but a lot of the same principles uh, were were applied back then. And I just sort of said, hey, time out. Let's just kind of simplify the process. Let's figure out how we build buildings here. What is the funding requirements? What are the needs? What are the wants? All those things. And then we had to call time out because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then late 2020, Early 2021, we got everything back on the on the table and said, "Hey, could we could we break ground in 2020 or two? Excuse me, 2022. Mm -hmm. What would that look like?" And everybody said, "It's doable. You know, let's back let's kind of back up from the time you want to start construction. Here's what needs to take place." And our teams from the Texas A&M System Capital Projects and Facility Planning to Texas A&M University capital planning, facility planning, to Kevin Hurley in athletics, to the 12th Man Foundation. Of course, our donors are, are stepping up. I mean, it's been a, a unified effort to get us to where we are to be able to – we're putting up construction fence here in a couple of weeks Wow! around the, the current indoor track. Mm -hmm. That's going to – there's construction trailers that are going to be parked out there here before too long. The indoor track, the current indoor track, just about has every – sort of piece of the, of the track that we're going to keep trophies some some equipment in there the scoreboard just about everything is out of that building that building will start uh, to come down so the first two things are indoor football and indoor track that's what people are going to see first and then when football's over we'll renovate the bright building then we'll tear down the current indoor football mm -hmm. late december early january and then start building the academic center. Wow. Those will be the first pieces that people will see. So mm -hmm. it's it's here. We're uh, continuing to raise money. The Centennial ca campaign is around a uh, little shy of $90 million right now towards our $120 million goal. So mm -hmm. we're off to a great start. And mm -hmm. Did the pause actually kind of help because the new plans mm -hmm. being a little yeah. more forward-thinking? I think it helped map some things out yeah. and, and be forward-thinking. But what it did hurt, though, was the economy and the construction market. Right. So things are Everything now, more expensive. Things are more expensive mm. than what they were. And they usually go up anyway. There's inflation. There's things that go up. Cost escalation goes up anyway. But in some categories, we're seeing some extremes. You know, we hear about supply chain. We hear about cost. We hear about things being stuck on ships, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere in the ocean because they can't get here in time. So I, it's getting better. It's leveling out. But it definitely – it's more expensive than what it was a couple of years ago. So, Okay. So along the lines of the Centennial campaign, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of questions referencing it. Uh, first from our good friend Sutton Turner, class of 93 here in College Station. He's going to use some figures here. Now, yeah. you mentioned just shy of $90 million as far as getting to $120 million. That's the 12th Man Foundation right. pledge right. to the project. Right. And Sutton here throws a few figures out. Uh, yeah. Always has that statement first. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Sutton says many football programs across the country are worried about their donors redirecting their giving from season tickets to an NIL collective or donations for facilities to being redirected to an mm -hmm. NIL collective. But the Ags had 94% season ticket renewals, 170 million of 200 million raised on the Centennial campaign for facilities, and the NIL collective is making A&M yeah. a very attractive place for the best talent in the country so simply ross how do you keep it going how do you grow in all caps more of the 526,000 former students getting involved in their school mm -hmm. who may never have participated before yeah 
No, I think he makes a great point. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, some of the figures, I'm not sure where he got 170 of 200 raised, but because we're raising $120 million. Mm-hmm. We will have some revenue from some other premium seats. We'll have some athletic debt reserves that will be put towards it. We'll have some some um, debt financing that will be spit off because of uh, some, some increased revenue. So we don't quite have $170 million raised. We've raised 90 mm-hmm. And then there's some other buckets that are being filled uh, from some other categories. So how do we grow? I, I think it comes down to engagement and communication. And the things we talked about earlier, young alumni programs, student programs, building that t- pipeline. We're getting ready to launch a, a rewards program about how do people, how often do people attend our games and you can earn points and, and things like that. So I think it goes down to communication and engagement and just stating the case for what we're trying to build, asking people to give. And again, no one's better than our 12th Man Foundation. So I think it's awareness, it's engagement, it's asking, and it's really just showcasing. And then a lot of times people do want some benefits, and that's where we do have the challenge. We don't have a lot of season tickets that are sort of between the goal lines. And if that's what people want, then we may not be able to fulfill that. But I think the message then has to be you can still make an impact if you do this. Here's some other options to, to make an impact. And so we have to communicate that as often a, as we can to, to get that – to impact the five, I think it's actually more than 526,000 mm-hmm. now. It mm-hmm. will be in a couple of weeks when we have graduation right. next week. <laughs> um, but that's that's what we have to do is, man, just think if we had 10% of the 526,000. That would be 52,000 people constantly giving to athletics. Mm-hmm. And right now we're kind of in the 20,000 range, a little shy of 20,000, you know, so which is a high number. Mm-hmm against our peers but man if we could get to 10 percent, what would that say it, it would mm-hmm. say a lot and so yeah. and then uh, back to the nil stuff and you know donations we're we have to embrace all of it and look we we can never tell a donor where to spend their money it's their money it's their you know their feelings about the institution we provide options you can donate you can buy tickets you can do a sponsorship and i made the statement that we have to embrace all of it in today's world if I try to fight somebody over, or, our, or you mentioned Brady, if Brady goes to a donor and tries to fight that donor over, no, you have to give here. Mm-hmm. No, I really want to give to the collective. No, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. That's not a good, healthy dialogue. Mm-hmm. We have to allow the donors to choose where do they want to invest. And right now there is that new option where you can do NIL, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And so far we have not seen people that have said, I'm choosing one or the other. Maybe they don't do as much through the 12th Man Foundation. That's okay. Maybe they're doing this over here. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So our job is to facilitate what is your interest? Where do you want to give? If you want to give to NIL, we can't really do that. That's outside. Do that over here. But here's your options to to give and donate. And so Mm -hmm. that's uh, that's, that's the way we've approached it. And, And Travis Dabney and the staff, they've done a great job of just saying, where do you guys want to give your money? Mm-hmm. It's up to you. It's your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's our options through the university, but that, that's that's really how the conversation has to, is, has to unfold. Is part of the, as Sutton says, how do you keep it going and, and grow, is part of that by bringing in championship coaches and the yeah. student at, like, to me, you know, so close to it, when I see what the men's basketball team did and embrace the university. When right. you have those right. and you're making them into the future leaders, but by championship coaches, championship caliber teams, Jimbo says it, Dr. Banks says it. Athletics yeah. becomes the front porch of the university. Does yeah. that also play into growing oh, I think and so having too. people get I think involved? When people have confidence that the right leadership is in place, the, the vision is being carried out, how it sort of matches what they think. Texas A&M should, should be about and, and stand for and excellence and everything that we do. So I think there's no doubt. I mean, go out and hire Jim Sloshnagel, mm-hmm. established sitting mm-hmm. head coach. Go out and hire Joni Taylor. Mm-hmm. Go out and hire Buzz Williams. Go out and hire Jimbo, right? And we could go on and on down the list. You make those kind of decisions and people say, okay, that's what I want out of A&M. And that's what I want our university to, to stand for. And, and then you're right, it fuels – sort of the marketing vehicle of the university can be utilized through athletics as that that front door, mm-hmm. the window, 
how, whatever analogy right. you want to use, I, I think it, it sends a message for sure. Okay. Uh, one more referencing the centennial campaign, and they threw out that number again of $200 million here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this comes from Manuel Ramirez, class of 19 and class of 21, so there must be a recent uh, postgraduate degree in there. So congratulations yeah. on that, Manuel. He's from San Antonio. Uh, the recent announcement of the $200 million centennial campaign has brought up some questions among current students as to why so much money can be invested into athletics facilities while certain academic facilities or resources seem to lack in funding. Where does the money come from, and can investments into our athletics have secondary effects of potential funding for non-athletic student yeah. needs? No, I think it's a. I think it's a great question. Um, related to where does the funding come from? It comes from donations from our our donors, former students, you know, fans. Donations is one category. We will actually we will take out some long term debt that'll be financed through athletic revenues. So that's a second category. And then there's a reserve money that we have built up in in athletics that we'll spend towards these projects. So. So it's all really money generated through athletics. It's not institutional money. It's all money that, uh, that goes through athletics. So that's how these things are funded. Um, I do know that the university is committed to having top-notch facilities across the board. There's, there's some aging facilities, so there's kind of a deferred maintenance category. There's new buildings being built all the time. But our job is to not drain anything from the university. That, that's the key is we need to be – self-sustaining, -sustain, self-supported, and that's how we've lived here at Texas A&M. We need to continue that. Um, and so, again, back to getting more people involved, it, it all kind of ties together today. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, young alumni programs, student programs, whatever it is to get the pipeline built up, then we can make sure we maintain that self-sustaining um, category. The other thing about what I've really been fascinated with, the biggest donors to athletics – they also give to other parts of campus, mm -hmm. and that yeah. mm -hmm. that's that's typical. Right, I think uh, here at A and M especially, but I think in higher education, usually the biggest donors to athletics, their gateway was an academic unit, mm -hmm. and so that's what's really neat about what we can do is, boy, can we synergize with another academic unit where it's a joint proposal, it's a joint gift. I mean, you know, I look at uh, a guy like Dave Dunlap, Dave and Ann Dunlap. You know, Dave. The core band practice field is named, mm -hmm. you know, in his honor. And he's also served on the 12th Man Foundation mm -hmm. board. And he's given to athletics. Mm -hmm. You know, so look at Dave Dunlap. He's given all over campus. And I could go on and on mm -hmm. with other examples. But to, to his point, to Manuel's point, there are donors who are also giving across the campus that can help, you know, make sure we have the right facilities uh, all, all across campus. All right, one more from the twelfth man here, and this one I think we can have a little fun with. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Aggie Bob, class of '80 from Houston. Uh, he references this past basketball season. Uh, he said uh, basketball was on the verge of being, uh, excuse me, the basketball season was on the verge of being something historic, as they were basically a shot that was halfway down from winning <laughs> the NIT. Yeah. Uh, but it was still a season worth talking about among basketball history. There have been <laughs> movies made about what sports teams accomplish over a season. He references Hoosiers, which is a classic. I think what happened to our beloved Aggies from beginning to end would make for a good movie. So he says, with that in mind, Ross, Andrew, and Will need to discuss what actor would play the role of head coach Buzz Williams. And he does throw in a final sentence, of course, Corey, Buzz's wife, <laughs> may want some input in this as well. <laughs> so. I'm glad he threw Corey in there yeah. because Buzz will be the first one to tell you that she's the boss. Absolutely. <laughs> she's she's, the, the, head she's coach. the head coach. She's the boss, yeah. <laughs> so uh, by the time June comes, I will reach out to Corey with the same question, or see what her uh, answer we'll will be. put a pin in this one, That's and right. we'll also have That's her right. answer for the okay. next town hall. So. Who? Who's going to go first? Because this isn't well, just to I, me. It says I, I'm going to I'm going to start. Andrew and Will. Uh, yeah, but you you get you've got most you, your uh, priority. You've got the more priority okay. points at this table. How, um, about, how about if we let's eliminate? I've got two people to eliminate. Okay. Oh, you're first. crossing two people out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got to bring someone back to life to play him. So okay. I don't know. So the people that I eliminated. Yeah. Dennis Hopper. 
uh-huh. and Nick Nolte. <laughs> Blue Even chips. Blue and chips. Hopper and was on yeah. Hoosiers, but he had a bit of a problem. So yeah. So yeah. let's let's yeah. eliminate yeah. those two guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I, let's eliminate Gene Hackman. Right. From Hoosiers. Yeah. Let's right. eliminate those right. guys. Yeah. But a young Hackman would have been great in the role of Buzz, yeah. if no Hoosiers. Yeah. Young right? Hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. I want to bring so. back to life Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think would be a great Buzz okay. Williams. Philip, okay. didn't he play Art Howe in Moneyball? Oh. He's played a coach before. Yeah. Didn't he? Am I right on that? If not, someone's going to tell us. Okay, well, yeah, we may get a message on that. (laughs) See, I chose now Buzz, the bald head. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to you got to take that into account. So I chose a guy with some basketball chops in the movies too. He was in Semi Pro, the comedy with Will Ferrell. He was in the classic White Men Can't Jump. Mm -hmm. I chose Woody Harrelson to play Buzz Williams. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a good Woody Harrelson story. He, uh, oh. When I was at Ole Miss, he was filming a movie in somewhere in central Mississippi, and he came up to – we played Alabama in 2014, and he was feeling himself. Let's just put it that way. He <laughs> was having fun. He was having fun. I've got a, I've got a picture somewhere on my phone. Wait, with, this is uh, a football game? With Woody Harrelson, yeah. Yep. Ole Miss, that's yep. when you yep. beat Alabama, yep. right? Yeah, in Oxford, Alabama. Yeah. 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 We had Katy Perry. Katie, that, I was going to say Katy was Perry was there too. Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah. And I see Woody before the game and, like, you know, talk to him. And, and then I see him at the end of the game. And it's like, whoa, where, where have you been? Oh, you've been in the Grove. And then we win the game and, like, everybody's in the locker room. And I turn around and Woody Harrelson is, like, body surfing with, like, some of the players. <laughs> and it's like – how did he get in here? Anyway, <laughs> that's, I, that, awesome. that's a digression. Um, okay, <laughs> that's not a digression. That's a progression. That was, that was phenomenal. That was a great. So here's digression. who I here's who <laughs> okay. I had because look, Buzz Buzz is a fit guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you got to have yeah. somebody. Yeah, that's fit. Uh huh. So I got a guy named Mark Sinclair, who no one knows. You're making me what his stage that. name is. You're going to the Google machine. So Mark now. Sinclair is Vin Diesel. Oh, his, his, his real name is oh, Mark Sinclair. Yeah. So Vin Diesel, again, all right. the, the, the look, bald, the mm-hmm. look, all right, mm-hmm. yeah. right? The and then the Rock. <laughs> the I, Rock. I think Buzz signs off on these, and I think Corey does also. For him, I mean, you can't go so wrong. So if with Corey had to choose guys. between Woody Harrelson, Philip Seymour Hoffman, The Rock, and Vin, Vin Diesel, Diesel, yeah. Who, who would Corey choose? I don't know. Today, she it's may, multiple may, choice now she may for have some ABC other ideas. or yeah. she probably, we'll ask, we'll ask that she number. probably yeah. does. But I think we all did well. Then there's the, but then there's the part of me of like if you if you watched all twelve episodes of Rooted on the basketball social media channels, yeah. Buzz does a great job if he had to play himself. And I absolutely oh, loved no. I loved <laughs> that transparency and the inside look yeah. at the program. Yeah. Oh, and I felt you could see that yeah. connect. You could see that it was from the beginning yeah. to the end. A great yeah. story. I, I agree with Aggie Bob here. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. And, the, and those things are just bite-sized. You know, they're six, seven minutes long. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mm-hmm. perfect how they do it. But that's what I, I had to do. I'm glad you yeah. submitted these in advance so I could do some research on this one. I never oh, knew yeah, this Mark one, Sinclair. Mark nev- Sinclair. Yeah. We couldn't just hit you. Now, that's the according last to Wikipedia. Yeah, so hopefully Wikipedia is accurate. Well, uh, after Investor Googling, I'm also seeing that yeah, it's Vin Diesel. Vin, Vin so, Diesel yeah. and The Rock, I think. This is good. Because look, the Rock. I mean, look, Buzz has the three-piece suit. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine Rock in a in a in a vest, Mm -hmm. three-piece suit, with no jacket on, you know, (laughs) white collared shirt, roaming the sideline? Yeah, absolutely. I think it'd be perfect. Would he Would he also come and do a post-game interview with Doctor Thornton and me? He probably would. Okay, good. And it'd be entertaining, (laughs) just like Buzz is. So (laughs) yeah, our uh, football game day engineer Kevin Minchow. Mm Hmm. Text Matt Simon, okay. our producer. I am correct. Philip Seymour Hoffman did play Art Howell. Okay. Football. And he was okay. bald in that that's the Im- Okay. That's the important so, part. Yeah. Will was correct. Yeah. We're going to do that. <laughs> that's how we're going to close Kevin, this thank you. Um, right. And <laughs> be- before we go, Caleb Griffin, outstanding work and all, all the 12-man production people for Rooted. Absolutely. get that in there. Absolutely. All right. Hey, it's been fun. Yeah, I'm glad we could a lot of fun. have a little. That little, was great. Yeah. A little joy today. and yeah. Enjoyed that. Let's Another one in the rolling. books, guys. Good luck to all of our teams as we compete in postseason and regular season wrap-up. So, yep. thank you all. It's coming at us quick. And that is it for the May Town Hall. We'll get word to you soon on when we'll, we're back to you in June. So long, everybody, from the south end zone of Kyle Field.